I have the pleasure today of being joined by two amazing guests. I have Michelle Hill, who's the founder and managing director of Discover Your Edge. And I'm also joined by Stephen Wallace, who's the co-founder of Beer Ops. Michelle Hill, great to see you. Thanks for making time to catch up with us. My pleasure. It's a Stephen, pleasure. great to see you again. Thanks again for uh, making time to catch up. It's a pleasure. So Michelle, you're the founder and managing director of Discover Your Edge. I wonder if uh, you're an organization who deliver AI-driven business transformations. I wonder if you could maybe just uh, give us a 30,000 foot overview of your company, Discover Your Edge, uh, maybe a little bit of background of what led you to build it, what sort of uh, market you serve and what sort of business problems you solve for your clients. Sure. Thanks, Des. Um, so really, um, AI, it's not a new thing, but um, since the advent of ChatGPT and other large language models, it's become at the forefront of everyone's thinking in terms of how do I actually apply this new tool to get the best out of my business. So what we actually do is help people to understand where they can use um, ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini to actually improve their business and their productivity and their workflows. And the idea is not to look to be replacing people, but to enhance their potential and to enhance what they do. And my background came from a business coaching background where I was focused on helping people improve their productivity and helping them to systemize and be organized and manage their time better. So when this new productivity tool came along, um, someone actually referred to it as um, like a productivity tool on steroids. It seemed obvious for me to expand my business out to incorporate um, training and consulting and coaching people in how to get the best with AI. And Fantastic. Yeah, sorry. It reminds me of the fact that when the calculator came out, no one lost their job from a calculator. It was just another tool that helped them do math faster, right? Yes. Yeah. It's... um. I, I guess there's that big fear of the unknown that's going on at the moment and um, and nobody really does know what the impact is going to be. But when we look back at other huge industry disruptors, yes, they do disrupt the industry, but we do manage to find, it's like water, you find it finds its own level and then we figure out um, how we incorporate it and what's the best way to use this in what we do. I love that. And um, uh, last week I was at an event where the CEO of the organization said something to the effect that AI is not going to take your job, but somebody who is better at AI than you will definitely take your job. Um, what's, a, what's a day in the life of Michelle Hill like as the founder and managing director of Discovery to Edge? What sort of things does your sort of day-to-day -day, uh, uh, remit sort of entail and, and, and how do you approach that with regard to your customer engagements and your customer facing activities? Yeah, um, well, uh, I'm very lucky. I actually live on Bribey Island, which is um, beautiful beaches. And so for me, uh, the beginning of my day, um, unless it's cold and miserable and raining, starts off with a walk along the beach because I also feel that uh, we do spend a lot of time on screens. So it's important to make sure we get time outside as well. And often um, my day in the mornings, um, I usually block out time for my focus work. So that's when I do my working on the business time and all of those things that seemed like a really good idea at the time, but I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do them projects. And then um, usually in the afternoons, it's either client meetings or training sessions or um, putting together social media content, those sort of things. And at the moment, um, two or three of my evenings a week are taken up with networking as well because it's really important to build and expand and have really interesting, supportive people around you, particularly when you spend a lot of time working by yourself. Fantastic. Well, Beer Ops fits right into that. We'll get into that in a bit more detail in a moment. Stephen, uh, I'd like to come to you now if I can. Um, I, I wonder if you could maybe just introduce Discover Your Edge as a Beer Ops event sponsor for the Brisbane event and give us an overview of what it means to have Discover Your Edge on board as both a sponsor and a participant at that event. That's an interesting question. So I met 
Michelle, as part, um, I'm a networker as well outside of bureaus. It's a you know bit of a habit that I think everybody should get into. And as part of this networking group, I discovered this person called Michelle, who claimed to be an expert in AI and all the rest of that stuff. And I'm going, hmm, I, I'm a developer. Of course, I know all about chat GPT and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, as I soon learned, when I put all of my ego to one side and actually listened to what Michelle was saying, she's a very, very smart person. And I've actually implemented many, many things that she has suggested. So as, as a developer, the short answer is um, we, we need to listen to what, you know, what Michelle says and see if you can get some of her training, you know, in, you know, in your company. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, we'll delve into that in a bit more in a minute. Um, Michelle, walk us through what sponsorship of VeroOps, uh, Australia's largest tech networking event, means to your organization, Discovery Ridge. Uh, what does it mean to the organization overall and, and what are you looking forward to? Uh, for, for the organization overall, it is an opportunity, I think, to expand on what Stephen just said, that often in the tech world, pe people assume that they know all of the tech and that they don't really need to learn anything new. And um, and I probably made a similar assumption when I first met Stephen, because I thought because he had a really techie background, he would be right up with um, AI. And when I'm saying AI, I'm talking about large language models and how you apply it to what people do when they sit down at their desk. So for me, having the opportunity to really network with a whole group of people who are probably similar to Stephen in that they kind of think they sort of know it. And it comes down to that old adage of you don't know what you don't know. And I would love to have the opportunity to show people how simple it is to really um, improve your productivity without having to be a techie nerd. But if you are a techie nerd, then you have the capability to take it to the next level. I love that. Well, with that in mind, uh, I wonder if we could expand on that further with regard to the event itself and, and on the night, as it were. Uh, what can attendees look forward to from Discovery Your Edge at this year's uh, Beer Ops Brisbane event? I imagine they'll not only get the opportunity to talk to you and some of your team in person, but also network, as you've just said, uh, mm -hmm. and obviously learn more about the business and, and your overall offerings. Um, walk us through kind of, you know, what people can look forward to with regard to you being at the event and the sorts of things you might be able to discuss and, and, and delve into with them in person. Well, Sorry, sorry, Des. That's I was okay. going to say, sorry, Stephen, then. Um, <laughs> I will um, have a number of uh, demonstrations ready to show people just to highlight the different ways that they can get the best out of using a large language model. And I can also do qu qu very quickly show them how we can apply that to exactly what they do in their role because that's one of the beauties of working with a large language model is as long as you provide it with a little bit of context we can hyper personalize whatever we create for you so those sort of things will be on offer but literally um, come and ask me anything um, and if I don't know I'm going to ask chat GPT to help me but this is your opportunity to really understand that because I kind of feel like I'm on the edge of the tech world, but I'm not a tech person. And this is the this is the opportunity for us to merge together and really understand what we both do. And is it the case that you know when you talk about language models, uh, are you talking about the generative AI element of it? Uh, you mentioned ChatGPT. Is it sort of the front end of the generative AI element as opposed to the back end language model, which is probably a lot deeper than you mean? And yes. Are there specific Gen AI uh, interfaces you're talking about? I mean, I imagine you are going to be looking at, you know, all the platforms, whether it's an independent one um, or whether it's something that's integrated to the likes of Microsoft 365, like Copilot or Google's workspace, like their Gemini, um, or maybe an independent like Perplexity, for example. Walk us kind of through what those demos might to, to you know offer. If I was turning up as an attendee and I had a conversation, said you know, show me what you can do for me and where you integrate. Just give us a quick overview of sort of what that means. I imagine by the sounds of things, you're talking more about the generative AI interface and developing prompts and learning how to get the best out of them, rather than actually integration uh, at API level or the language models themselves. Uh, generally, it is about generative AI um, and it. 
from my perspective, how I help people, it doesn't really matter what um, generative AI platform they're, they're used to or they'd like to use because the principles are all the same. And what I mentioned before about tech people having an advantage is that when you do understand how to connect up and use the API and um, create um, like agent-like and agent products, that's going to put them at the next level above somebody who's just learning generative AI and they're doing a role um, like a lawyer or an accountant or an office manager because they're, they're not... They're not generally looking for advanced automations and ways to really, um, I guess, press a button and do everything. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you're excited about the uh, agentic uh, agent element that's coming out from everyone's platform now. Um, Stephen, I wonder if I can come back to you. I, I know we talked about this off camera, but for our audience, uh, what's the latest news on the 2025 events and the venues? Can you give us a quick recap of the dates, locations, and any other details you can share at this stage that sort of people might not have heard about uh, in your social media feed or, or your updates and emails or even potentially our, our recent web TV episodes you've been on? So, you know, this is sort of analogous to coming come out to Christmas. Now, if I tell you about our new T-shirt designs, I don't think that you're going to sleep properly until you actually get your hands on one. So I probably won't mention the new T-shirt design. What am I not going to mention? <laughs> T-shirt designs. Okay. That's very funny. Kids at home, three, two, one. Yeah, we've got a great T-shirt design. So Br Brisbane kicks off uh, the 2025 uh, se season for us on the 19th of June. You're testing me now. The first of July is going to be sunny Perth, and then we've got a cup. We've got a few months break in the middle there before we get to Melbourne on the twenty second of October, and then we're rounding off with the Big Bang Sydney at the end of the year. So we've got tickets available now for uh, for both Br Brisbane and Perth. We've also got a few sponsorship opportunities. There's there's a couple of tables at each of the venues. If people are interested, they can just drop us a quick line sponsor at beerops.io. And uh, obviously, like if you want to get your tickets, you better be quick uh, as an attendee. Um, and you can get those tickets by checking out our website, beerops.io slash events. You'll be able to get your tickets sorted out. You better start running. They are going to go. Fantastic. Well, it's a very well-priced event. I think last time I looked, it was free. Um, <laughs> but... Uh... Interestingly, and, and Michelle, I'm sure you can attest to that, that sponsorship of an event like this is not only a great way to support the community and the industry as a whole, but it's a fantastic way to get in there and develop a great network of great contacts who will at some point be key decision makers in investments and other initiatives where uh, brands that are, are part of the event, such as yourself, Michelle, and uh, your organization will be front and center of people's hearts and minds. Michelle and Stephen, I wonder, um, another quick one, and I'll start with you, Michelle, you know, what should attendees be planning with regard to getting the most out of their local beer ops uh, experience, and particularly with Brisbane? Michelle, I wonder if I could start with you. Sure. Well, if you're planning to come along, make sure beforehand you're looking at uh, who is going to be there, who are the sponsors, who are the, who are the organisers, and perhaps follow on LinkedIn, start to engage and understand a little bit more about them so that when you get to the event, uh, perhaps you might have organized some time to catch up specifically maybe with me and knowing a bit more about um, who I am and what I do and who the other sponsors are means that when you do get there, you'll get more out of the time that you spend. And if you're really focused on perhaps solving a specific problem, then you can start to look at who is going to be there, who could really help me with that problem. Fantastic. Stephen, you've done this for over a decade now. What are some of the things that you recommend people do? I know Michelle's covered some really great tips there um, with regard to folk, uh, uh, you know, from, from an attendee's point of view, planning leading up to the event, during the event itself on the night for a couple of hours, and then post-event, how do they get the most out of your beer ops events? I think uh, you need to know, know yourself, you know, just sort of expanding on what Michelle was saying there. And mo most developers, you'd be very pleased to know, are very detail-focused people. They are rather sort of introverted by nature. So 
getting them along to a networking event and actually speaking to people. You must, you must wake up that, you know, the magic of these events happens when you get out of your comfort zone. So we recommend that you chat to five, five people at the event that you don't, you know, you've never met before. Um, I wouldn't count, you know, the bar staff as, you know, quality sort of people or quality <laughs> together necessarily. But say say hi and genuinely see how you can be of service to that person because there's magic that happens. If you find out what, what people want and you genuinely go away and focus on trying to help others first, you've just got a winning combination for the speed of trust at that point and you're going to develop some wonderful relationships. You will have to go through a bunch of pillocks to be able to get there. It's a good Scottish word for you. You know, you don't, you don't want to be called one. You don't want to know what it means. Yeah, you've got to go through a lot of people, but be, be of service first always, and you'll have some fantastic quality network that, that you can leverage ongoing. Fantastic. Well, I've had the pleasure of uh, attending at least one from memory uh, recently myself, and um, all of those points um, that you, Michelle, and uh, Stephen have raised uh, are exactly what I did. I, I made sure I was following the brands that were sponsoring. I was uh, either connected to or following the subject matter experts or the execs who were coming along. I looked at the social discussion around the Beer Ops hashtag on different platforms, particularly LinkedIn and Twitter. I reached out and provided some likes and comments and even reshares of some of the material just to engage beforehand. When I got there, I already had a bit of a agenda of the people. And as you said, Stephen, I'd pre-qualified. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call them pillicks, but I'd certainly qualified who was going to be of value conversationally. Um, but on the night, what was interesting is I was very quick to introduce myself and learn who the person was and what the role responsibility in company was to work out whether there was somebody that I was going to get some value from in my network. The one thing I do advise people to do is, is keep your phone open, have LinkedIn open, have the search bar there, click on the little hash uh, on the top right hand corner that's the scan and make sure you just constantly scan contacts to build your network because you can only have so much discussion on the night uh, over the couple of hours, but you can follow up for weeks and months afterwards if you've got 50 or 60 new connections on your LinkedIn profile to then follow up through in the next day or two afterwards. Well, Michelle and uh, Stephen, you've given some great insight. I wonder if you could wrap us up. Uh, Michelle, I'll start with you. Where can people uh, in our audience um, go to learn more about you and your organization, Discover Your Edge? Uh, well, you already touched on one, Des, and that's LinkedIn. So find me on my LinkedIn profile and Discover Your Edge page. And if you want to look for a web link, uh, it's discoveryouredge.com.au forward slash the AI edge. Fantastic. And wherever our audience sees this video, whether it's directly on a, our video platform, video.com.au or our YouTube channel or excerpts on social media and digital platforms, we will have links and details where you can learn more about all of that. Uh, Stephen, same quick question. Uh, where can the audience go to learn more about not only beer ops, but also, I guess, look to register for the upcoming events such as Brisbane? Sure. So I think that the first thing to do is make sure that you follow us on LinkedIn. Beer ops is really easy to find. Uh, make sure that you smash the follow button for all of the social platforms uh, using our handle of beer ops HQ. Uh, but I think um, after you've done that, pop along to the website beerops.io. You'll be able to get your tickets. There's a contact form. There's a chat bot. All the action starts there. Get in touch. Have a chat. Fantastic. Well, thank you again, both. Uh, Michelle, congratulations on getting on board for Beer Ops Brisbane 2025. Really looking forward to seeing how that goes. Stephen, again, congratulations on an amazing season of 2025 for massive events in Brisbane, Perth, Melbourne, and Sydney in that sequence. And all the dates will be wherever you see this video in the show description. There'll be details of the dates and times and locations and venues. Really appreciate you both making time to catch up with me and share it with our audience. And I know the Beer Ops crew are tuned in as well. And uh, we'll look forward to having you both on the show again some stage, maybe post event. But in the meantime, safe travels. Congratulations on an upcoming great event. And we will look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Michelle.